Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about a very useful tool in statistics, okay? It is called Analysis of Variance. In short, it is called ANOVA, Analysis of Variance, ANOVA, okay? So, in the last videos, in the last chapter, we were comparing the population means of two population, right? So, uh, test if the average of the two populations are equal or not, or you can say tell, uh, test if those two samples were taken from the same population or not, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the basically implied meaning of that, okay? So, but in the t-test, we did one sample t-test, meaning uh, from if there is only one sample, and then two sample t-test, meaning you were comparing two samples, and in the two samples, there were pairwise, and then uh, there, were, uh, there were independent samples, right? Pairwise sample was also called dependent sample, all right? So, but if there are more than two samples, then the t-test uh, can be uh, very long, or maybe maybe the type one error, if you use the t-test for more than two samples, comparing the pairwise, then the type one error will increase, okay? Let us talk about that. For hypothesis concerning the means of three or more populations, we use an F test, and the technique is called analysis of variance, which is, uh, which is in short denoted by ANOVA. The T test is designed to compare two populations. While comparing two populations with alpha equals to 0 0.05, there is 95% chance that we correctly conclude not to reject a zero when two population means are equal, okay? So alpha equals to 0 0.05 is the probability of type one error. That means 95% of the time you are not rejecting a zero when the population means are equal, when the null hypothesis is true, right? But if you are comparing more than two, say three populations, for example, there will be three pair of such two samples Sample 1 and 2, 2 and 3, and 3 and 1, okay? So the probability of not rejecting a 0 when it is true will be 0.95 times 0.95 times 0.95, right? Which will be 86% or 0.86. Thus, the probability of type 1 error or incorrectly rejecting a 0 for the case of 3 sample using pairwise comparison is 14%. You see that? So when you do the pairwise t-test for the in case of the three populations or the three sample, then if you do that method, then the probability of type 1 error will be increased, not 5%, it will be 14%. Thus, because uh, the not rejecting when it is uh, true is 86%, so 1 minus 86% is 14%, okay, or 100% minus 86%. Thus, the comparison of means with pairwise t-test will result higher chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. Hence, the previous method for comparison is not suitable for more than two samples. Okay. In summary, as the number of sample increases, there is more chance that one of the sample have mean different from other samples, even if the samples are taken from the same population. If there are k samples with c possible pairwise combinations, then the type 1 error on doing the pairwise t-test will be 1 minus 1 minus alpha to the c. Because in our case, we had uh, three possible combinations of pairwise comparison, right? And then if you do that, 1 minus 1 minus alpha, alpha is 0 0.5, okay? That will be 1 minus 0 0.5, 95. And then that c is 3, so 9.95 power 3 will be 1 minus that is given by 14%. That is the total type 1 error, where C is K times K minus 1, and K is the number of samples, okay? All right. So, 
So we use slightly different techniques to do the comparison of more than three populations, okay? So let us talk about assumption of ANOVA. This is, I think, one of the most uh, frequently used techniques in the uh, in the data science, okay, in the when you are uh, working with the data. So this is very important and uh, one of the one of the focus of this class too. Okay, before we apply ANOVA, we first determine whether the assumptions are met. The following are the assumptions for the analysis of variance. Number one is the population from which the samples are obtained must be normally or approximately normally distributed. So ANOVA requires the normally distributed population. If the population is very deviated from the normality, then we will use the non-parametric test to compare more than three po two populations. Do you remember what was the name of that test? You're right. So that is the crucial wallis test. That's what we did in the last chapter. Okay. The sample must be independent of each other. To use ANOVA, your sample must be independent of each other. The variance of the population must be equal. Okay, so there is a, uh, uh, there is a slight, uh, slight difference on the method, okay, uh, if the variation of between the population or the variation of the population or the variance in the population are very different, okay, uh, so, so we will we will discuss more later. Okay, that we, that is still ANOVA, but a little bit different. We call Wells test. We will we will discuss that type of example too. And the sample must be simple random sample. So sample must be taken randomly. Okay, it should be simple random sample. All right. So let us discuss about the single factor ANOVA. Meaning, we also call one factor ANOVA or one way ANOVA. Okay, so if the comparison is made of a single factor, we call single factor or one-way ANOVA. For example, comparing grades with number of absences, comparing weight gains with different diets, etc. So, so suppose you are uh, you are giving five different diets to the sample of let's say ten pigs each. Okay, diet one is provided to ten pigs. Diet 2 is provided to another 10 pigs, independent, right? Diet 3, diet 4, diet 5, similarly provided to different uh, uh, sample of pigs. And then you want to know which diet is more effective increasing the pig's weight. So basically what you want to do there is you want to know the average growth of the, uh, of the pig's weight after a certain time, right? So you want to basically, you want to test whether the average, uh, average weight uh, or the weight growth, okay, average growth of the weights in the certain time interval in all five samples are equal or not, okay? So so we, we use ANOVA in that case. Also comparing the grades with number of absences. For example, you can say if the number of absence is between zero and five, 1 and 5 or 5 and 10, 10 and 15 and 15 and 20 like that. You can consider different groups there or different columns, I would say. And then you can list the grade of different students, let's say 10 students in each group. And then you want to compare if the uh, number of absences have impact on the grade or not, right? So basically, if uh, the grades in Every groups are equal or different kind of, all right? Okay, so let us see the uh, steps. Write H0 and H1, what is the H sub zero? Null hypothesis is mean of the all populations from which the sample were collected are equal. Or, may, or in other words, all the samples were collected from the same population. Okay, that's, that's what it is saying, right? Or if they are collected from the different population, they have the same mean. That's what you want to test, right? And H1 is not all means are equal. What that means, meaning at least one of the mean is different from the other mean. That's what not all means are equal means, okay? At least one of the means uh, is different from the other means. Now, 
Step number two is find the test value or test statistic. Okay, what is that? We denote by F and then the formula for F is MSC over MSE. What does that mean? That means mean square of the column divided by mean square error. So uh, we, we, we will, we, I, will, I, will, I will give you a formula for MSC and MSE where MSC, mean square of the column, is given by SSC, sum of square of the column, divided by K minus 1. But what is sum of square of the column? It is not like squaring all the columns. No, we will see. Okay, over k minus one. K is the number of groups or number of columns here. Okay, k is the number of groups or number of columns. So M S C is called mean square column. The S S C is the sum of square of the deviations of the column mean from overall mean weighted by the sample size okay so for example you have you have a, let's say data like c1 c2 c3 suppose you have three samples okay these are the data for sample one these are the data for sample two and then these are the data for sample three okay now, what the SSC said is, so you will, you will know how many data are here, right? N1 is size of the first sample or the first column. N2 is size of the second column. And then N3 is size of the third column. Now you will find out X1 bar, X2 bar, X3 bar. That means the mean of this column, mean of this column, and mean of this column. That is X1 bar, X2 bar, X3 bar, and xk bar there can be so many other right now so what it says is the ssc is the sum of square of the deviations of the column mean from overall mean what does that mean so what is the overall mean overall mean we denote by x bar gm that is the grand mean meaning you take all these three columns of data all together and find out the mean we denote by x bar gm that is the grand mean or the overall mean of all the data taking together so this is x bar gm and ssc what you do is you take the deviation or the difference of each of these column means from the uh, x bar gm from the grand mean you square that that says square of the deviations of the column mean and then so another one will be, uh, another one will be x2 bar minus x bar gm square, right? And another one will be x3 bar minus x bar gm square. So you do that. Now you multiply each of those by their sample size. For example, for this one, this is the square of the deviations of the column mean from the grand mean. And you weight by n1, meaning the sample size of that column. This one will be N2, and this one will be N3, and then you add all these together, plus, plus. If you add the, all these together, then you will get N1 times X1 bar minus X bar GM square plus, N2 times X2 bar minus X bar GM square and plus, continue that way. This sum is denoted by SSC, sum of the square of the column. In fact, it is sum of the square of the deviations of the column mean from the grand mean, which is weighted by the sample size. Okay, that is one thing that is SSC. After you find SSC, you divide that by K minus one. What is K? K is the number of columns. So in this case, K is three. So uh, you, will be, you will be dividing MSC is equals to you write s s c over k minus one that's what you do so since this is the one factor ANOVA or one call one way ANOVA you find out the column means and the grand mean only but in case of the two factor or two way you will have to find out the row mean also okay so we will discuss the two factor ANOVA later but for now we are just talking about the one factor ANOVA okay find out m s c m s 
C, mean squared column. Okay, first you find out SSC and divide by K minus one. Next, what is MSE? MSE is given by SSE divided by N minus K. So SSE divided by N minus K is the mean squared error. That's what we call mean squared error. What is that? So the SSE here is the sum of square of the deviations of the data from each column from its column mean. So what is happening here is, so you find out this data minus the its mean, the column mean and then square. Okay, so you do like x1 1 minus x1 bar square. Okay, and then another is let's say this is x1, x2, x3, x4. So since uh, since this is the column one, I want to write one, 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 one here. So x11 is the first row, first column. x21 is the second data in the first column x31 is the third data in the first column, x41 is the fourth data in the first column, okay? So now you find out the, find the difference of this data to its column mean, and then square it, okay? So that's what you do, okay? And then plus, how do you do the next is x21 minus x1 bar square, plus x31 minus x3 bar square plus oh sorry x1 bar not x3 bar x1 bar square and then x41 minus x1 bar square right x41 minus x1 bar square you did this for the you did this for the first column similarly do that for the second column similarly do that for the third column and you add all together if you add that that is called sum of squared error okay now you know you know one thing because Instead of doing all these one by one, there is a shortcut way. What is that? You know the what is the formula for S square? S square is summation of x minus x bar square over n minus one. Summation of x minus x bar square over n minus one. Okay. So here, what are you doing? Is basically you are uh, subtracting each of the data to from its mean and then squaring it, which is same as that. So if you do like summation of x minus x bar square. This will be n minus 1 times s square. This is what you get, right? So basically what is happening here is in the short form, you can write sum of x minus x uh, bar, x1 bar square, x i1 minus x1 bar square, right? i1 means 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and then you add that. That's what you were doing here, right? So instead of doing all these one by one, what you can do in short is, this value is equal to n minus 1 times s square. n minus 1 times s square from this formula. So instead of doing this, we will do summation x minus x bar square is n minus 1 times s square. Look at this. For the first column, n1 minus 1 times s1 square for the first column. Similarly, for the second column, n2 minus 1 times s2 square. For the third column, n3 minus 1 times s3 square and so on. If there are more more of these, then you keep doing that. That is the sum of square error. Okay, guys. Now, to find out the mean square error, you divide the sum of square error by n minus k. What is n? n is the total number of data points. Basically, n, basically n is sum of how many data are here plus how many data are here plus how many data are here. So you can write n equals to n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus so on if there are many samples okay you add the sample size of each of those samples okay let us see where k is the number of columns or the groups n i is the size of ith column or ith group x sub i x i bar is the mean of the ith group s i square is the variance of the ith group and then x bar gm is the mean of the uh, data, that is the grand mean, okay? So this, this is how you find out the MSC and MSE, which is very important thing, okay? Now, that was step number two. Step number three is find the critical value or the p-value. How do I do that? 
To find the critical value or p-value, we always use right tail test. Don't forget this, okay? Right tail F test. And degrees of numerator and denominator is given by, because F test needs two degrees of freedom, okay? We need two degrees of freedom. One is for numerator and the other is for denominator. You see that? What is numerator and denominator? One is for this and another is for that one. Okay, for numerator and denominator. How do I find out that? For the degrees of freedom of numerator, it is k minus one. That means number of column minus one. Number of column minus one. And degrees of freedom of the denominator is n minus k means the total sample size minus the number of columns. So the total sample, I mean the total size of the sample, which is n, okay, n1 plus n2 plus n3, and you add all those, the total data, size of the data, total, minus the number of columns, okay. So where n is the total number of the data points, including all the columns here, okay. Now to find out the critical value, we use F table with, with alpha and degrees of freedom of the numerator and denominator, we denote it by F alpha N1 N2 N is obtained by, you can use table, I will show you how to use table. But in R it is very easy, you use QF and then one minus alpha, since it is right tail test, you want to find out the critical value, okay? So QF and then one minus alpha, if alpha is 0 0.5, you write 0 0.95 there, okay? N1 is the degrees of freedom of the numerator and N2 is the degrees of freedom of the denominator in R. If you want to find the p-value, since you want to find the area right of the test value, you do one minus pf, and then f is the f statistic from step two, and then uh, n1, n2 in r. So I'll show you both method, okay? Now decision is, if the test value falls in the critical region, or if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis okay guys so these are the steps very very important chapter okay these are the four steps on the hypothesis testing so in the next video i'm going to show you the examples okay couple examples i will be presenting there all right guys thank you